So if one Bardesi has started a number of uh, businesses, um, especially in the aviation space, including an airline, how exciting can that be? So he's the right person to probably tell us about how funding works in uh, those particular spaces, it's especially when it comes to our innovators who are constantly looking for uh, ways to scale up and methods that can help them. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Irfan. Um, you've also judged some of the programs with the Technology Innovation agency. I mean, can you tell us about the, what you think of the ideas that you found in the past? Um, Sunday, I think it's been very exciting to see, um, you know, South African companies, you know, they have a very different mindset, you know, when, when we talk about startups here. I was always concerned, you know, when, when I've had to judge, you know, companies in the US, in the UK, and European countries, you know, they, yes, they're thinking globally, yes, they're thinking of problems, but they're also thinking of problems outside their environment, outside their arena. You know, what I've always, always, always loved about South African companies, you know, having the opportunity to judge across many programs is they're really trying to solve local problems. You know, they're really going after issues that they see growing up, issues that they've seen their family go through, you know, and things that are very, very uniquely South African, you know, be it, be it problems in clean tech, you know, in, in this environment, or be it problems in townships, you know. So sometimes, you know, maybe the innovation is, is different if you actually use a gauge or use a lens or a global lens onto South Africa. However, I think they're doing the right thing. I mean, end of the day, technology startups were supposed to solve problems that they see as a problem, you know. And I think, I think they're doing a fantastic job in there. Mm, um, one of the big problems that a lot of startups um, often complain about is, is funding and how you then take um, your work to market and, and scale up. Um, what advice would you give them when it comes to funding? Look, I, I have a slightly contrary view, you know, on, on, on that particular thing, especially, especially when it comes to South Africa. And, and the reason I say that is, you know, one has to start a business and then go for funding to grow that business. We have unfortunately gotten stuck in that mindset that, you know, as soon as I have an idea, I need some money to go and try it out. No, go try it out on your, uh, you know, with, with your own whatever resources that you can get hang of, you know. Go come up with a minimum viable product and go in the market and do something. Go prove that your product actually solves a problem and then start exploring the idea of funding. However, you know, when it comes to funding, <clears throat> you know, I'm just going to introduce you to the idea of, you know, crowdfunding for Africa. You know, crowdfunding, you know, in our environment, you know, where we see funding is a bit limited, you know, it plays a very integral role today and going forward. What it essentially allows you to do is it allows you to formalize um, your friends and family around, as we would like to call it. You know, sometimes, you know, when you believe in something so much so, you should be able to at least go to your friends, neighbors, family, aunts, uncles, and say, listen, I've got an idea. I would like to do something about it. And rather than now asking them for a couple of hundred thousand rands, you know, you have the ability to ask for a thousand rands or two thousand rands or five thousand rands. And unfortunately, you know, in South Africa, prior to crowdfunding was introduced, what has happened is most entrepreneurs will pick up the phone. You know, let's say they're looking for a couple of hundred thousand rands. They'll pick up the phone. They'll look for those three or four people they believe have the ability to invest 200 or 300. And that's where the mistake starts. You know, because once they are let down by these two or three people, and it's not their fault, you know, they, the entrepreneurs haven't probably done their work, or maybe they're expecting too much from these two or three people. Now, with crowdfunding, at least you have the ability of being able to go to multiple people, sell your idea. You know, that's what an entrepreneur is supposed to do, right? Hustle and sell your idea and sell your concept. And if you can't take a thousand rands out of one person's pocket, maybe you have a lot of work to do. You know, so. I think, I think crowdfunding could potentially do some wonderful things for Africa. And secondly, I think we should also start comparing ourselves to other countries, other environments. And if you compare ourselves to other African countries, South American countries, I think with agencies like TIA, you know, with the kind of partnerships they bring on board, with institutions they're connecting to in Switzerland, in the UK, in all sorts of you know, different parts of the world, I think our environment is a lot better. Um, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side. Um, everyone often looks at these Silicon Valley startups, right? Um, <coughs> and how they manage to internationalize. Um, and the dream is to probably be like one of those companies, whether it's a, um, a Facebook or whatever else that was started um, in Silicon Valley. And you, and you find that here as well. Um, what do you think about a possibility of um, these ideas? You say they solve local problems. Can they be internationalized? So I, I do believe that there is, a, there is a small segment of startups in the South African markets that are trying to go after global problems. You know, 
let's, let's not forget Silicon Valley has managed to attract global talent from all sorts of places, including a lot of South African talent. You know, so if a South African goes to the Silicon Valley and creates you know, a company that solves a global problem, is it a Silicon Valley company or is it a South African company? You know? so, and also, let's not forget about the funding side. You know? I'm not saying you know, people assume that Silicon Valley has a lot more funding available. Let's not forget one out of 120 startups only gets seen by the VC. 119 startups get rejected even when they are sending their documentation to a VC. So competition is extremely high when it comes to funding that side as well. Do, can South Africa create global startups? Well, we already have created a few, right? Especially in the education space. But should we create global startups? You know, should we not instead utilize the, the talent that we have here to solve, if not South African, then at least African problems? You know, it's not that global startups are coming and knocking on African doors and saying, we know how to solve your problem. So you know, we have to have people, impact-driven people from our own continent, people from amongst us who, who will go out and actually solve African problems. You know, unfortunately, to date, Africa has looked upon as one country in some places. You know, they, they forget how many, that we have more than 56 countries with 3,000 languages. You know? So if some startup manages to solve a South African problem, it will very comfortably expand into the rest of Africa. We'll leave it with that question on whether they should think of going global, whether they should um, solve local and continental um, problems. That's Irfan Pardesi there, who has started a number of businesses um, in aviation and telecoms, including an airline.